Math with Rob, we're going to talk about the left-hand derivative. We're going to start with the definition of the left-hand derivative of a function. We'll derive the formula for the definition from the slope formula. We're going to compute the left-hand derivative of x squared, and we're going to assign an exercise and cover the solution. So there's a fact, and the fact is that um, if f is a differentiable function at x, then the right-hand derivative, the left-hand derivative, the two-sided derivatives, and all the other possible derivatives are all equivalent and called the derivative. So the definition of the left-hand derivative comes from the slope formula. The derivative is the slope of the tangent line to the curve at a point. And so um, the trouble that we, that we face when we compute this is to go from the slope of the secant line to the slope of the tangent line. So we start with y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. The change in the y's divided by the change in the x's. And we draw this picture of the secant line and we see um, that there is a point x um, above which we have f of x, the height f of x, um, and we'd like to find the slope of the tangent line to the curve at f of x. That, that's pictured here in this um, graph. And so in this case, we go back by a small horizontal amount h, horizontal um, in the x direction. And we um, let y2 be this point, the height of this point, we let y1 be the height of this point. We let x2 equal x and x1 equal x minus h. Now it's important to remember that h is positive in this in this picture. So um, we uh, plug in our values for our points um, x1 y1 and x2 y2, and uh, we take the limit. The limit uh, as this horizontal amount h goes to zero, graphically represents the act of squishing this x minus h and this x together and giving us f of x, the tangent line to the graph at f of x. At x -x. So let's substitute these values into the slope formula so that we get the slope of the secant line. Again, y2 was f of x, y1 was f of x minus h, x2 was x, and x1 was x minus h. This reduces down to f of x minus f of x minus h over h. Now, as the horizontal distance goes to zero, the slope of the secant line becomes the slope of the tangent line, or we also call the derivative. So f prime of x equals df dx equals the limit as h approaches 0 of f of x minus f of x minus h over h. So let's do an example of computing the left-hand derivative. So in this example, f of x minus h equals x minus h squared, and f of x equals x squared. So we plug into our difference quotient formula f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0 of, uh, f, of f of x, which is um, x squared, minus x minus h squared over h. And then um, we expand the x minus h into x squared minus 2xh plus h squared. Um, that's done by distributing twice or foiling. And then we notice that this x squared cancels with the x squared, the negative cancels with the negative here, and the negative goes over the h squared here. And so we get 2xh minus h squared over h. Notice that 2xh minus h squared over h isn't defined at h equals 0, but there is a removable discontinuity at h equals 0. So let's remove that discontinuity by simplifying the equation now. This equals the limit of two x minus h as h approaches 0. And as h approaches 0, h goes to 0. So we're just left with 2x. Now I'm going to give you an exercise. 
Please compute the left-hand derivative of f of x equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. I'll pause the video, pause the video now. Okay, you're back. Next. So we plug in um, for df dx. df dx equals the limit as h approaches 0 of x, x squared plus 2x plus 1 minus x minus h squared plus 2x minus h plus 1. That's f of x minus h. Then uh, we expand this x minus h squared and group it with the x squared. We take the 2xh, the 2x minus h here, and group it with the 2x here in its own quotient. And we group the 1 with the 1 in its own quotient. Next, um, we expand and simplify x squared minus x minus h squared, and we get 2xh minus h squared over h, as we got in the last example. Then we take the 2h that we get from 2x minus 2x minus 2 times negative h, and we get 2h over h. And then 1 minus 1 over h will be 0. Now we remove the discontinuity and we get 2x minus h plus 2. And then finally we get rid of the h because we're taking the limit as h approaches 0 and we're left with 2x plus 2.